Okay, I have got to do my tomatoes today. It's very windy out. You can see my stopping the breeze with bubble wrap when it was really cold. But I've got to do my tomatoes, take them down, move the geraniums and everything back towards the wall, pick the remaining tomatoes, at least those that haven't gone moldy. That one's gone completely moldy. So, um, yeah, woo, it's quite windy outside. You can see the draft. The bubble wrap really helped keep the really bitter cold out. But things are still flowering, look at that. I can't smell it, because with my cold, I can barely, I'm definitely not smelling with my cold. But you can hear my voice is funky. Look at my lemons. Okay, so. Attack the tomatoes now. I'm staying warm inside, out of the wind, but it's lovely and sunny. Well, I'm maybe halfway through the resort. Ooh, my voice. <laughs> Geraniums started repotting some of them. I still have to clean up stuff like my piles, tomatoes, and the canes. Done a lot of trimming of these salvia. Here you can see some more. This is my ginger. It's not doing very well. I think I let it dry out too much. My baby olive tree. Tiny thing I was given. But I'm repotting some geraniums. This geranium was from a cutting and it smells delicious. It's one of those ones where you brush the leaves and they send off a perfume. Anyway, a lot more space to work in. My two delicate, more delicate ferns are in here. But I have to trim these off. These are all my uh, cuttings. So I've got to repot all of them at some stage. So yeah, we're getting there. My little assistants are working their way in and out. All right, Java. Come on. Come on, Java. Good boy. Yeah. I've got to transplant these. They're still just sitting in their dug up bits, but their roots might have gone through. That's what happens when you're busy. Okay, so we're halfway there. And then, uh, ha, ah, busy day. Break for lunch. The sun's going down. It's uh, just after three. And I've nearly finished everything I was going to do today in here. You can see big difference. Oh, stove's lit. You can see the flames. And I've moved all the plants into here. I've put that um, salvia at the back there. My ferns have come into the middle ground. These are my uh, agapanthus that uh, they don't die back in winter. They just go have leaves that go yellow, so you just tear them off. These are a lot of my cuttings, cuttings, and uh, baby geraniums and big mature geraniums and more cuttings and more salvias and there's still lots to do but uh, I think I've broken the back of it I did have help I must confess I did have help but uh, yeah all the cucumbers have been taken down so uh, the end of the year I've got a, a bit of pruning to do like this um, chrysanthemum here. I should really trim this back. It's such a lovely rusty color. I love it. But it's already flowering from its bottom. So on another day, I've had a long day <clears throat> and I have my nasty cold. So there's lots of uh, stuff that I can do here. Cleaning stuff up. Um, but I can do that on another day when it's raining. 
There you go. Frosky wufsky with my cold. But um, some people say, well, if you have such a healthy diet, why do you come down with all these illnesses and or get colds and get them really bad or whatever? And that's because uh, when I worked for the wildlife charity in Southeast Asia, I came down with a tropical disease, which means I'm immunocompromised because of the uh, tropical illness that I have and that I will have for the rest of my life. I was hospitalized in the Royal Free Tropical Diseases Hospital in North London in 1990, when was it? 1993, October, 1993. After which I was like bedridden for three years. So I slowly got healthy. So that I am as healthy as I am is to my healthy diet. And uh, yeah, I eat junk food. I am no saint. But um, I love uh, gardening and it keeps me healthy. And I have lots more stuff to do in here. I've done a huge amount, but um, despite my cold. <laughs> anyway, my voice is about to go, so I better stop talking. <laughs> So what I do for my cold and bad cough and voice is my, make myself fresh thyme tea. This is thyme. Some of it is dying back a bit. I'll have to prune that out. But um, what I do is trim off some good bits of thyme. Let's see. See if I trim here, these will all grow up. So I'm going to trim there and there. Okay, so that's two bits of time to take to make my tea. And then I think I'll trim there. There. Now, that's enough time to make me a really potent thyme and honey tea. Best thing for my cough. Hey, Chuckalooks, how are you? Yeah. Okay, now I'll show you what I do for my thyme tea. So, put the kettle on. This is the hot ring. Boil my hot water. And then over here, I'm going to, this is my wonderful teapot. And it has this wonderful inside thing. So you put, I put the thyme in there. And then you pour the boiling water in there. And then you put the lid on like that. But this here, <clears throat> is the time. And what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna film myself doing it because it's kind of boring, but um, I strip, take that bit of grass off, I strip all the leaves off of these sticks, off these twigs. So I'm gonna do that <clears throat> while the kettle's boiling. Excuse me for my loud noises. So here's all my time I've stripped. These are the twigs stripped of the vast majority of their leaves. And here is that it's all right here. So, oops, don't need a bit of grass, dried grass. So this, I then put in there. There we go. Now, it's in there, and now <clears throat> I'm going to take it over here to the aga with the growling puppy dogs under my feet. Oven mitt on the aga. Isn't that right, kitty? It's like, don't move me. He's reveling in the warmth of the aga. So, waiting for this to boil. And then I'll pour it in there. Now oh, the kettle's boiling. So I pour it in here. There we go, see? All the time's risen to the top. And I'm gonna steep it in there for about 10 minutes. Really get the herbs and the oils out 
because that's what I want to go in my um, system and it's really, really good for your lungs. So take the kettle off, put the lid on. Now my mug has been, this is the simmer. This is the boiling uh, ring. This is the simmer ring and it's still, the lid keeps it warm. So this mug has been warming up. I'm gonna put this up here to warm and stew while this, I'm gonna put a teaspoon of local honey in. And leave that there, right in there. It's lovely and warm. So take this off the table, I mean off the aga. So then in about 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, that will turn a different color and I'll pour it in there with the honey. That's really good for your lungs when you have a cold and a cough, which is what I've got. Looks like Maya has stolen her brother's chewy things and her brother is looking on. It's not fair, is it, Java? Your bone's been stolen. Well, it's beginning to get crowded here in front of the Aga. So I have to figure out where I put my foot slide it in there to get up to pour my thyme tea. And you'll see that it's got a bit of a yellow tint to it. And I can't tell you how delicious this is. Thyme tea with a teaspoon of honey. You can see the color in it. This is so good. And it's so good for me. Anyway, there you go. Time tea, my recipe with honey. Tee hee. <laughs> well, the sun has set and we're in for a stormy wet night. So I've had my time tea. You can hear my voice is a bit better already. <clears throat> I'm going to call the horses. Hopefully my voice will carry. Come Woo! Come on, girls! Come on! Come on! Woo! You can see them moving. They're beginning to walk. Come on, girls! Out of girls! Come on! I better not shout too much or my voice might disappear again. Come on! Here we go. Where's Miss Daisy Rose? Here's Miss Daisy Rose. dun 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 guys are not getting a second meal this evening. You've already had one and you've got plenty of hay. Horses, gotta close their gate now. Horses are gonna be lovely cozy in here. And we'll see how the uh, bale of hay over there works. If that's um, an improvement in location. Anyway. Time to go inside and have some more time tea. <laughs> what are you being ferocious at me for? <laughs> she doesn't like all the lambs. Hey, sweetie. How are you? How are you? How are you? How are you? You good girl. They want to try and get some of the horse food. You're not going to get any of the horse food, though, are you? No. No horse food for alpacas. No. No horse food for alpacas. <laughs> oh, are you? 
of bloom pushing feathers out of the way. How are you, feathers? Yeah, how are you? Are you sweetie? Yeah. You good girls. You good girls. Okay, definitely going in now. Had my chat with my friends here. My little yo lamb flock. Crows are all heading to bed, heading to their roost. Loads of them. They swirl around in the winds before they land on their roosts. Okay. Good night, everybody. Come on, pups. Pup, 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 pups. Come on. Hey, pups. Come on. Come on. Java. Good boy. Mama. Yeah. Look, mustard's coming as well. Are you coming, kitty? <laughs> Come on, puppers. The gates blew open. Come on, Ink. Come on. Always close gates in the countryside. Everybody's heading in now before the storm comes. <laughs> Time's going to be bold. Come on, kitty! He spotted magpie coming. Let's see. Come on, kitty, kitty! She might have spotted magpie as well. There's time. Let's see. <laughs> oh, Java's gonna interfere. <laughs> you can see time is right there. Magpies figured it out. <laughs> and is above time. <laughs> oh, too funny. Java, leave a magpie alone. Okay. Woo, the wind's picking up. <laughs> 